16 years old. And she couldn't speak hardly any English. And you know, so I grew up with two Polish grandmothers because my, my grandmother on, on my father's side also was you know, from Poland. So we'd have Poro and we'd have Kuro. And my grandfather would dance the knife dance at Christmas time and throw the knife into the wall. And despite all these cool things that were going on, I was like not really, didn't think it was pretty cool to be Polish. You know, I was like, Poland, I'm not really interested in Poland. And my mother kept telling me stories when I was young. She'd tell me stories about where she lived in the town of Smolos, not far from Rzeszów where they had a farm and when the snows came down that the snows covered up all of the, the, uh, the yard and they had the big little tunnels to get you know, through the snow and how she had a cow named Whistle and how cow, her cow Whistle got stuck in the quicksand and it took the whole town to get together and put a rope around the tree and rescue old Whistle out of the quicksand. So I was listening to all of these stories and thinking about this idea about being Polish. And when, you're, when you're a young kid and you're Polish and you're Italian, boy, the jokes keep flying, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you know, so you're, you're trying to, to be Polish, but you know, not to be you know, too concerned about it. And then I started playing music. I learned how to play music at 15. I started playing the five-string banjo and I started, luckily, having a wonderful teacher, uh, mentor named Pete Seeger, one of the great folk musicians of our time. And I learned how to play all these different instruments. And one day, I was at a, a friend's house. And I was sitting there having a cup of coffee. And I picked up a National Geographic magazine. And there was this little article that said, Springtime Hope for Poland. And I opened it, and I saw this, a Polish bagpipe. And I was, I couldn't believe it. I just stared at it. I never thought about Poland and bagpipes. And, you know, I, I started thinking about it, and I said, now, wouldn't that be cool to learn how to play the Polish bagpipes? Little did I know what I was getting into. At the time, there was hardly any information that was out there at all. I went you know, to the library and they would have you know, Grove's uh, Encyclopedia of Music and Musicians and they had just a paragraph, just a paragraph about Polish bagpipes. They said there's five different varieties of Polish bagpipes and sometimes they're called Dudy and sometimes they're called Gaide and sometimes they're called Kobza which is wrong. Kobza is an erroneous name for bagpipes, but usually when you talk to people in Poland, if they know anything at all about bagpipes, they call it Kobza, but it's Koza. Now, who knows what Koza means? Anybody? No. That's right. This yeah. album had Polish bagpipes recorded on it, so I knew now what the sound of these instruments were like, because I only saw the picture at first, and I said, well, you know, and one of the songs, I was able to get this really kind of cheap set of these Polish bagpipes that I had with me that was from a dance group. That, uh, and I had struggled to try to imitate one of those songs. Uh, that I, it was a song that I sang at the beginning, Koroniczki, Koroniczki. And so I, I was trying to learn how to, to play this. So I go there and I'm looking for these bagpipes and while I'm there, I start hearing the sound, and I'm saying, that sounds like a bagpipe. It sounds like a bagpipe. And I run to where the sound was. You know, I hear this sound, and I keep running. And by the time I get to the doorway, it stops. And I was there with my girlfriend at the time, and I said, I think I hear a Polish bagpipe. She goes, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So, I hear the sound again, and I run up the stairs, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and look, chasing the sound, and right when I get to the top, because it was a dormitory, you know, a college dormitory, it stops. 
Now I'm really starting to feel frustrated. I said, oh, I can't believe it. Maybe I'm imagining this whole thing. You know, I want it so bad, I'm just hoping that it's going to be there. And then it starts again. And I run, and I run, and I run, and I finally get to the door, and I knock on the door, and the bagpipe is still going, and the guy is standing there with this. And so I couldn't speak any English. I mean, I couldn't speak any Polish, and, and he couldn't speak any English. But he, he would make you know, a face at me when I was doing something wrong, and he'd smile when I was doing something right. And so we, we went for that whole week. I had some lessons with him to play this type of bagpipe. So this is one of the five bagpipes. So we're, we're going to learn a little bit of, about some Polish language. In case you don't speak Polish, you have to try and humor me. So this is the Dude, Dude, Wielga Polska. Polska. Dude, Wielga Polska, the bagpipe from Great Poland. And this is from the region of Poznań. Okay? So this is the type of instrument that was played there. And this type of instrument, most of these bagpipes go back to about the 15th century. That's how old the bagpipe tradition is in Poland. And the instruments that I have today are made just like those bagpipes that were made in the old days. So they're not in any way Modern. <laughs> They're made just like they would be made back in the 15th century. The cane reeds, everything is archaic. As you can see, that they have these cow horns on, on the, uh, the drones. So the, the parts of the bagpipe is the chanter, and this is uh, one of the horns that helps mellow out the sound. And this is the drone. All right, and once again, you have the cow horns on here, and the, you have a bellows, like a fireplace bellows, that you pump up. And on most of the bagpipes, they are paying homage to the goat. Remember, we're talking about what goes out? The goat. And you can see there's a little goat on, on the top of the bagpipe here. And that's to remind you of the, the animal spirit you know, so that when, you know, these bagpipes usually, they weren't going around killing goats, they weren't goat killers, you know, but they were like the Native Americans, where when something would die, instead of just discarding it, they found a way to use it, so they would use the bagpipe, uh, bags were made out of goat, you ready, huh? Let's see. <laughs> You have to really build up a lot of arm muscle in order to first inflate the bag, and then to keep it going, you have to rock your arms back and forth like this. And you, when you're playing the, the bagpipes, especially these Polish bagpipes, you can only lift one finger at a time. Okay, so when I'm playing the pipes, you'll notice that my hands are moving quickly, but the pipes are, it's a closed fingering kind of a feeling. So you have all of these things going on where you're trying to learn how to... I'll, I'll give you another example of a song. So that song, this little song, was the song that that guy was playing when I knocked on the door. 